Hey there, internets. I'm Michael, and this is Two Can Play That Game, bringing you our next instalment of Game Night in Review, where I talk about the games that me and others have been playing at Games Night. So in this episode, we will have uh, My Village, Arboretum, Zolkin, and then there's just a little honourable mention, because they were played, but Dark Moon, um, was played, which for those of you who don't know, it's another one of these hidden traitor games in the same vein as Battlescarred Galactica or Dead of Winter. But I already talked about that a lot in episode 15 of Game Night in Review. So if you're interested in finding out more, do go watch that. And I have put a link in the description for that. Then also honourable mention to Elysium, which was being played, which is a fantastic Greek themed card game where you're drafting cards using this unique pillar system. And again, I don't want to talk about it too much because I have already done a full series of videos on this. So you can always go and watch those. And again, in the description, you'll find a link. So just the usual caveats, these are not Full reviews. I have not play tested these games extensively with lots of different numbers, etc. Some of them I might not even have played. I'm just talking about games because I love games. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the first game that other people played. And that is My Village. Now, I think this is a reasonably new game from Stronghold. It's kind of a dice allocation game. Um, from what I saw, the nature of the game is you're trying to kill off the village. Um, bit of a grim theme there. But anyway, the, the, the end game condition was a certain number of villagers dead anyway. Um, my understanding of how this works is there's lots of different abilities that are shared abilities. And then you also have your own abilities that you're building up. And you'll be drafting dice and you want the dice to add up to the number of the ability that you want to use. Now, if you have abilities with the same number, you could trigger all of them with your dice. On top of this, you have good dice and bad dice because your black dice are evil and do nasty things. But of course, the later you are in the round, the less choice you have in dice. So this definitely sounds like an interesting Euro with a bit of a different theme and I'd it's certainly one I would be willing to give a go, and the people there really seem to enjoy it. Um, of course, if you've played it and have any comments, do let me know. The next game I'm going to talk about is Arboretum, and this is a little card game from Z-Man with some gorgeous artwork of trees on. Now, I didn't know a lot about this, so I went and I spoke to the guys who were playing it because I wanted to find out more about Arboretum. It's one that I've seen out there. I know it's one of these little games, and I thought, oh, it's just another set collection game. But I went and talked to the guys, and it sounds really interesting. There's a lot more to it than just set collection because, yes, you are collecting sets of trees. Well, you're collecting numbers from one to eight, and you want a full path of one to eight, really. But you're only gonna score based on what's still in your hand. So you need to play things down in order to have the things down to score, but you won't score them unless you've got the same cards in your hand. So there's lots of different trees, and if you have the most of a tree, you'll score that tree. But if you've got the most of the tree in your hand, then you haven't got it down on the table to score. So brain burnery for such a small little card game. And as I say, the artwork is astounding. So this is definitely one I'd be interested to try at some point. Um, Z-Man, if you're watching, please send me one and I'll do a review. <laughs> um, I don't think Z-Man are going to be watching, but anyway. So that's all the games that other people played at Games Night last night. So what did I play? Well, I played Tolkien. Um, I have discussed this slightly in a previous game night in review, but it was just with regards to having seen other people playing it. And this time I got the chance to play it myself. Now, what Tolkien is, is it is a worker placement game. It's one of these medium weight euros. And you start with a certain number of workers, which for most people is free. And I will add, we were playing with the expansion 
and there was some bits from the expansion that everyone was a bit meh not too sure about this but the one thing everyone said really was a good thing and added to the game was that you get dealt clans so you have a special power that makes you unique to everyone else at the table and that's always a good thing to have in a game and definitely added to it so the nature of the game is it's one of these point salads where you're trying to get the most points. Now there are types of buildings that will get you end game points and the nature of the game is you're playing through a year and at different stages in the year you have opportunity to score. So I think it's at the mid-year and end of year you'll score based on how popular you are with the three Mayan gods. So I was playing a strategy where I was building up points throughout the game based on these gods. So I got, there are these advancement tracks that will help you with where you're placing your workers. And I got up high on one of those that meant that I was keep abling to increase my position on these tracks, which then meant I was getting good points throughout the game. Several other people completely ignored those tracks, didn't go up them at all. And then just got all of their scoring from the buildings that gave end game scoring. So it shows how this game has multiple different routes to victory. Because me and the guy who won were one point apart and completely different strategies. Absolutely completely different. So it really was an interesting game from that point of view. Now, mechanically, it's all really good and it's very interesting, pretty set up. There are these cogs on the board and you have this central big cog that represents the actual calendar, which is the year going around. You move it a day at a time. And every time that moves, it moves all the other surrounding cogs. And I think there are five other cogs, five or six. And it's on these cogs that you place your workers. So you always have to place at the lowest position on a cog if it's free. And that will cost you nothing to place there. However, as the cogs go round, you will leave your worker on there and it will travel merrily along on this cog day after day until you take it off. So the longer you leave it on, the better a thing you get for that worker. But of course, the longer you leave it on, the more time it's not actually doing anything other than building up. So mechanically, a really interesting, really brain burnery game. Now, we played with four people and I really think that is too much. So the amount of downtime there was between turns was really heavy. And because if you were say the fourth person, the amount that would change with wheel positions and who's placed where and taken what off, etc., was immense after three people had gone. So you couldn't even really that well plan your turn ahead. So it was kind of boring in that regard. I think maybe if you were playing with two or three people, this would be a much better game. But as a whole, not one I would look to add to my collection. One I do think would work as a two player, but I think probably best as a three player. And as I say, four and five, I think just got too clogged down. But then I'm not a huge fan of this kind of midweight worker placement game. I mean, you've probably heard me say before, I dislike Agricola and Caverna. I feel that they you don't have enough workers, there's not enough you can do, and no matter what you do, you're just losing points left, right and centre. I've never played a game of Agricola or Caverna and not ended up with a negative score. So that's part of why I hate those. Um, and this had a similar feel for me when you first sat down at the table of, well, I can do anything. I don't really know what to do. I don't know what direction to head in. What is, what's going to do anything? What, what really matters? There's no kind of guidance or path of what to aim for. And it really, for me, lets the game down because it, I'm prone to analysis paralysis. And this game was really bringing that out. And I felt really sorry for the other people at the table because I was taking ages with my turns. I really was. And it's not because I was doing it intentionally. I was just there going, well, I could do that, or 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 I could do that. And then I was like, well, what difference are those things going to make? And OK, maybe if I played this game more, there would be less of that. And you'd go into the game and go, okay, well, I see these buildings are out, so I'm going to go for this strategy. 
or something along those lines anyway. But I would prefer to enjoy the game at least from the second play and not have to go, well, maybe once I've played it five times, I'll know enough about the game to actually be able to enjoy the game. And as I say, all the mechanics are great. And if you like that kind of Euro game, you're probably going to like this game. So that's my thoughts from game night last night. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. Of course, if you have, check out the rest of the videos on the channel, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and family, as well as checking us out on social media. You can find us on Twitter and on Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.